I'm basically from Lucknow, working in Bangladesh from last seven years, so I'm a perfect example of a world Muslim village. You know, you can see a lot of things. And I'm working in an international curriculum, so yes, I'm lucky enough to get these opportunities in my life to explore the world. And I'm really thankful for the organizers and the host for giving us this wonderful and amazing platform where we can share a lot of practices. I've been having a lot of food for thought since morning and hope I can engage you for the next 15 minutes. Okay, I'll stick to time 10 minutes and give you some good thoughts. Okay, so my topic is pedagogy approaches for 21st century skills. What is pedagogy? Pedagogy is art and science of teaching in, in Roman's language. How do we teach? You know, lots of teachings are happening in the school, but the question is, is learning happening? So, this is the main question. We teach a lot of things, but what about learning? So, I'm going to tell you some small steps. We talk a lot about 21st century. We need to do this, we need to do that, 21st century skills. So, how do we teach so that we develop those 21st century skills? Well, you cannot go to the class and say, hey, come on, let's learn communication skills. You cannot go and say, how about learning the research skill today? You can't do this, right? You have to have this in your curriculum. You have to have this into your day-to-day -day teaching and learning pedagogy. So I'm going to give you some small things. There are lots and lots and lots of pedagogical approaches. What I have done, I have chosen some which we use in my school. Okay, so that I can give some examples, I can connect, so that it will be easy for me to explain and it will be easy for you to understand. Alright, so let's go. I'm gonna, okay, before I begin, I'm gonna play a small video. Trust me on this, this video is amazing. It is called, did you know, just a minute please. Let me tell you about this video. They release every year a new version of it. Okay, like, did you know 21, did you know 22? So, this video is, okay, I won't talk much, but the data presented in this video is going to blow your mind. This is the latest version, did you know 2022? I'm sure next year they'll come up with a new version. This is our look.
So we can see we live in the information era. Okay. Now, can we have the next slide? Oh, the next slide, please. Yes. See, this is what is the new model of learning for 21st century. We have to have the kids who know arts, who have the knowledge of science, and have the brain. This is the expectation. But what is the reality? Reality is this. Reality is we have so much of information. Time is that same 24 hours. And the knowledge. Are we getting more knowledgeable or not? Or we are confused now how to use this information. We have so much to learn, to know, but we do not have the exact knowledge, abilities and skills to use that information. All right. So, I love this quote. It says, 21st century learners, the, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. It's an amazing quote. Okay, what are 21st century skills? Everybody knows. I'm not going to talk more about it, but to be precise, 21st century skills are divided into three categories. Literacy skills, learning skills, and life skills. Right? Literacy skills are all about those who see, we keep on talking. It's about critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. We know, everybody knows the importance of forces. Literacy skill is about information literacy, media literacy, and technological literacy. I just not hope we have so much information, but we do not, do not know how to use that information. So it's about knowing those things and the life skills. We know how important it is for us to be flexible, to have leadership qualities, to take initiative, to be productive, and to have social skills. So these are basically 21st century skills. But the presentation is how to develop those skills. Okay. As I said, I have taken some, uh, some uh, examples from my school. So the first approach, the first pedagogical approach to develop 21st century skill is project-based learning. Okay? If your school adopts for project-based learning, trust me on this, your kids will be 21st century learners. Now there's a difference between project and project-based learning. Project is all about the wonderful presentations at the end. But the project-based learning is a process. How the kids go through that process. This is very important. So, the project-based learning is all about hands-on, collaborative, multidisciplinary. Ma'am just now spoke about all these things in her presentation. Student-centered, real-time, real-world, flexible. You have to have topic, telling the kids how those topics have the real-world connection. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you have a memory of your teachers telling you in your primary school, in your middle school, why are you learning this? Do we have the knowledge? Do we have the memory? Trust me, I did not know what is the use of Archimedes principle. I did not know what is the use of sine theta and cos theta when I was learning it in my grade 10 and grade 12 because my teacher never told me. I really did not know where in my life I'm going to use all these things. It is very important for us to tell the children that this learning will be helping you outside the world when you will be stuck with this. So have real world connection with your learning and that's the main aspect of project based learning. Alright, these are seven essentials of project based learning. I'll quickly go through lots of information available on Google about it. A need to know, a driving question, student voice and choice, 21st century skills, inquiry and innovation, feedback and innovation and a publicly presented project. As I said, in a project-based learning, the output, the product is not important, the process is important. Next step, to develop a pedagogical approach to develop 21st century skill is flipped classroom. Let me give you an example from my school. We offer a subject called Global Perspective with the subject offered by Cambridge. What do we do with that? We don't have books. We don't have a set curriculum. Okay? So, global perspective is about teaching the kids the burning issues around the world and how to find the solution to that. <coughs> I'm sorry. So, we don't bring the kids to the class and say, hello, let's learn about global 
pollution, warming and all those stuff. In flipped classroom, what happens? You give all the information, content and material to the children beforehand. Maybe through a Google Drive or somewhere else. Let them go through it. Let them understand what is it. They can take their own sweet time to go through this. Once they come to the class, you have a discussion on it. You have activities on it. What is the difference between a traditional classroom and a flipped classroom? What happens in the traditional classroom when the teacher goes to the class? Hello, today we'll be learning about body system. And the teacher starts reading from the book, showing some presentation and videos. And then you give homework to the kids, which they go home and reflect on what happened in the classroom. But in the flipped classroom, it's flipped. It's otherwise. You already give them the material, you already provide them with the content part of your topic. They already go through it and once they come to the class, you simply have some discussions, some activities on it. So it's a wonderful approach. Might not be applicable for all the subjects, but certainly to some subjects. Then, as I already discussed, alright, the next, very important, collaborative teaching and cooperative it is very important for the teachers to collaborate. Okay, what we do in Bangladesh, in our school, we have formed the networking. Uh, we all that came to the school, we have formed the networking of all the teachers. Uh, we, regular, we arrange regular meets after every four months, after every eight months, or so on. We meet, we share our best practices, we talk to each other, we understand what's going on with each other, and that's how we collaborate. Very important, we cannot work in isolated island, we need to talk with each other. And cooperative learning, okay, all those days when the kids would sit in the line in the classroom, you have to put them in groups, we have to give them common goals. You can have groups based on the ability, based on the interest, and so many other stuff. We can have differentiated groups and give them the task. Very, very important to have the group learning in the class. Do not give them isolated, single-handed work all the time. Have a combination of both. Okay, the next one is gamification. Kids love games. They just love playing games. So what we do uh, for a particular unit or a particular course, uh, we turn the unit or the syllabus into a game. For example, my grade 5 students we're learning about energy conservations. So what we said, all right, now we're going to have the summative assessment. You guys are energy warriors, okay? Come up with various ways to tell us how to conserve energy because you guys are energy warriors. And we had lots of uh, badges, avatars for the kids on that. And kids were all amazingly participating into this because they played our games. And they love playing games. And another example from my class, my school is we have one unit of body parts. We told the kids as a summative assessment on this unit, play a uh, design a board game. Okay? So the kids started designing board games, displaying the function of different body parts. So what I need to see over here is turn your course into a game. Kids love playing games. Give them challenges. Give them different roles to play. Let them make the rules of the game. There is no 80 marks, 50 marks or A grade or B grade. It's like how you play the game. You win, you lose, you get another lifeline. Likewise. So if you turn into your syllabus or your content into a game, they will have more interest. So gamification is another new trend. Lots of information is available online. You can get about it. Alright, the next one. Uh, somebody in the presentation already spoke about STEAM. So that's, we started with STEM. STEM is science, technology, engineering and math. Then came STEAM, adding art in it. Science, technology, engineering, art and math. And the current trend is R. Yes, I'm almost done. And the current trend is STEAM. That's about adding reading to it. So it's science, technology, reading, engineering, art, and math. Make sure your, your syllabus is now from STEM to STEAM to STEAM. 
Okay, uh, as I have less time, uh, I'm going to skip this, but you can Google a lot about design thinking, what is a design thinking, and you can find out. This is another interesting way. And last but not the least, I would like to talk about the competency-based learning. What is competency-based learning? In this, the students do not follow a set academic calendar. Okay, like for example, in my school, we have kids who come from abroad, who know Bangla. So we do not follow the set academic calendar with them. When we teach them Bangla, our aim is by the end of this grade, the child should know at least this, this, this. Now, that much, that, that aim can take six months, four months, three months. We don't have to test them as for the academic curriculum. We believe in developing the competencies. Do not follow the traditional curriculum, calendar, and academic model with them. So it's like till they learn, we've got to teach them. It's like that. Okay, I'm almost at the end. So I want to read this. It's really, really, just give me two more minutes. Please bear with me. I wanted to change the world. When I was a young man, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world. So I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my town. I couldn't change the town and as an older man, I tried to change my family. Now as an old man I realize the only thing I can change is myself. And suddenly I realize that if long ago I had changed myself, I could have made an impact on my family my family and I could have made an impact on our town. Their impact could have changed the nation and I would indeed have changed the world. So we have to change ourselves so that we can make a difference. Time is not permitting. This is a book. You'll find it in YouTube. Important book. Please go through it. I had a video. I think I can't show it. Okay, so the important thing about 21st century skills is So we have to teach them the 21st century skills and these are some approaches by which you can try developing 21st century skills. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.